Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to learn how to make box and whisker plots. Let's get started. Alright, so today we're talking about box and whisker plots. Now, in a second, you'll see exactly why they're called box and whisker plots. Uh, but before we do that, it's important to know what is the whole point of a box and whisker plot. Why would you ever make one? What does it tell you about the data? So a box and whisker plot shows the variability of a data set. Now, if you haven't learned uh, about measures of variation, uh, go back and check out this video here that I made a little bit ago about measures of variation. A box and whisker plot uses those same measures, but we just take it, take those measures and make it a lot easier to look at um, than just looking at the numbers. And to make a box and whisker plot, you need something called a five number summary. The five number summary is all five measures or values that you need to have to be able to make that box and whisker plot. So first, you need to know the least value, that's one. You need the greatest value as well. Uh, you also need the first quartile, I'll call that Q1. You also need the third quartile, Q3. And finally, you need the median. Those are the five, the five numbers that you will need to know before you can start to construct your box and whisker plot. So let's get started with our first example. All right, example one, make a box and whisker plot for the following ages in years. So here's my data set. As always, the very first step is to put it in order from least to greatest. Okay, and then as always, you wanna double check. I really can't stress that out enough because if you forget a number, everything could be wrong. So make sure you check. So let's see, 1, 2, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, and 10, 11, 12. Good, so I'm happy. Now I need to know those five numbers. I need to know my least uh, value, my greatest value, Q1, Q3, and my median. So first, my least is 14, that's easy. My greatest, 38. Um, now let's find the median. So right in the middle there, 30 is my median. Now I find the median of my lower half for Q1. So halfway between uh, 20 and 26 is going to be 23. That's my Q1, which would be 34. That's my Q3. So I've got my five number summary. Least value, Q1, median, Q3, and my greatest value. Now I'm ready to do uh, the box and whisker plot. First, you're going to make a number line. And your number line doesn't need to start at zero. You start wherever your least value is. So my least value is 14, so that's where I'm going to start. I need to go all the way up to 38, so I think I'm going to count by twos. I don't want to count by ones because that's going to take too long. So I've got my number line. That's ready to go. Now it's time to make the box and whisker plot. So at your least value, you're going to put a dot, and we're going to put it, you're, you're used to putting the points on the number line. This is slightly different. You put everything above it uh, so that it's easy to see the numbers. So there's a point. Um, and then at Q1, I'm not going to put a point. I'm going to draw a vertical line directly above that value. So my Q1 is at 23. So 23 would be here. I'm going to draw a vertical line, okay, just kind of like what we did there, a vertical line there. Same thing at the median. Median is 30, a vertical line above, vertical line, Q3, the exact same thing, 34, vertical line, and then finally my greatest value, I do the same thing as my least, and I put a point. Between your first quartile, or Q1, and your third quartile, that's where the box from box and whisker plot is. So you basically just connect these lines. So that's my box. Then you can probably guess, here is where we draw the whiskers. So just a line, whoops, coming out from the middle. 
Not from the bottom, not from the top, just right in the middle. So these are the whiskers, right? They look kind of like cat whiskers, I guess. And this is the box. And that is your box and whisker plot. Here's one to try on your own. All right, before we move on to the next example, I want to kind of tell you what the whole point of the box and whisker plot is. If you remember at the beginning of the video, we said it, it shows the variability, how the data is spread out, the distribution. If you remember, this line right here represents the first quartile. And when you think of quartiles, you think of quarters or one fourth. And that's important to, to realize because this whisker right here from the least value to my first quartile represents about one fourth of the data. This other whisker, same thing, about one fourth of the data. Every whisker is always gonna represent about a fourth of the data. It's not always gonna be exactly one fourth, but it's gonna usually be pretty close to a fourth of the data. Now, the box, here is my first quartile, here's my third quartile. If you remember interquartile range, we're talking about the middle half. So the box is about one half of the data. And if you want to break it down even more, from the median to the first quartile here, this little section, that's a fourth, and this little section here is a fourth. So put them together, that's what makes the whole box one half. So keep that in mind, I would put this in your notes, that's gonna help you hopefully understand the next example. All right, example two. The box and whisker plot over on the right here shows the body mass index, or BMI, of a sixth grade class. So part A is asking what fraction of the students have a BMI of at least 22? So if we look over at the, the box and whisker plot, you'll see 22 is right at that third quartile. And at least, that's the key word there, at least, or key phrase, at least means 22 or greater. Well, greater, 22 or greater is talking about that right whisker, that upper whisker. And remember, we just said those whiskers always represent about one-fourth of the data. So that's our answer. What fraction of the students have a BMI of at least 22? About one-fourth of the students. Let's look at B. Are the data more spread out below the first quartile or above the third quartile? So below the first quartile, well that's that left whisker, that lower whisker, and above the third, well, that's the right whisker. So how can we tell which one, uh, the, where the data is more spread out? Well, if you look, the lengths of those whiskers are not the same. The left one is much shorter than the right whisker. The right whisker is a lot longer, which would uh, tell you that that data is much more spread out. So the answer to B, are the data more spread out below the first quartile or above the third, third quartile? So the answer is gonna be above the third quartile because that right whisker is longer. Let's try part C. Okay, part C, find and interpret the IQR or interquartile range. If you remember from measures of variation, interquartile range, we get that from taking the third quartile and subtracting the first quartile. So it's the range of that middle half of our data, or in a box and whisker plot, it's the range of the box. So third quartile, that was 22, minus the first quartile, which is 19. So our IQR is equal to three. Okay, and let's, uh, let's interpret that. So we would say, the middle half of students' BMIs vary by no more than three. Here's one to try on your own. Okay, and lastly, we're gonna talk about the shapes of box and whisker plots. The first one is called skewed left. And if you notice, the whisker on the left is longer than the whisker on the right, 
and more of the data is on the right side. We call that skewed left. It's the exact same thing as uh, how we describe histograms, the shape of histograms. So if you've already seen that video, this should look very familiar. Um, if the two whiskers are about the same length and the box, the median's kind of right in the middle, the, the, the data is not more to one side or the other, we call that symmetric. Um, and then finally, the last one, skewed right. If that whisker is longer on the right um, than the one on the left, and more of the data is towards the left, then we call that skewed right. Here's one to try on your own. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.